From San Jose, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE. Covering Hadoop Summit 2016, brought to you by Hortonworks. Here's your host, John Furrier. Welcome back everyone. We are here live in Silicon Valley in San Jose for Hadoop Summit 2016. I'm John Furrier. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE Media's flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal from noise. Next guest is Robin Perrohit, who's the group president of Enterprise Solutions Organization, business unit at BMC. Welcome to theCUBE. Great to be here. So BMC's transformed itself as a company. Yep. Um, we're here at Hadoop Big Data. I'm kind of connecting the dots instrumenting things, management software, <laughs> big data, servicing applications. Give us the update about the new BMC. You're new to the role, right. uh, the company a few years, now promoted up to be group president of the Enterprise Solutions. What's the new BMC? Right. New BMC is all about digital. So we're helping enterprise customers go through digital transformation. Big data is absolutely central to all of that. And we're finding that you know all the things we've always done in, in optimizing data, securing infrastructure, helping them run IT services like a business, they're all relevant, but things are moving much, much faster than ever before. And why Hadoop Summit? Why that connection here? Yeah. Tie that together, I kind of can guess, but I want to hear <laughs> your thoughts on that. Well, we, uh, we just launched a bunch of new solutions for, for big data, in particular around Hadoop. Uh, so we launched a solution to optimize and automate applications that include Hadoop with the rest of your applications in the enterprise. We think this is the year that Hadoop has grown up and you got to prove the value of those projects. So big data clusters don't exist in isolation. So you want to automate processes across SAP, cloud applications, Hadoop applications, all of that with one end and yeah. solution. So really excited about that. And um, particularly for the crew here, we opened up a bunch of new APIs in our flagship product control M. So now you can yeah. program in a JSON, all those Hadoop jobs into the same job schedule engine we use for the rest of your enterprise application. And really it's about automation. I mean, one of the yeah. things that I saw in your announcement was that automation and bringing it through to security. So, you know, moving data around, setting up these connectors. That's right. Because APIs are, have to be open now. Right, right. Yeah. So, what's your role there? Management, systems management? Right. What, what specifically are you guys solving yeah. the problem in that in, in that news announcement? So, so we, first thing is we allow people to automate jobs across every kind of application now, including Hadoop databases and applications. And then preventing that with a simple interface. Mm -hmm. So the developer community can deliver all that back office work to build very quickly in you know those interfaces and, act, and control planes into their application. So big data extending yeah. past Hadoop is the other theme. That's right. Again, we're hearing over and over right. multiple years now, but also you know here in the cube we saw a few years ago the big whales coming in. You right. saw right. IBM, right. Oracle, right. you know all the top companies right. coming in amongst all the developer, open source, and startups. Right. What's changed? What's the big data landscape look like? Because it's just not just about Hadoop anymore. Yeah. What are you guys seeing in this vision? Yeah, I think that the, the biggest challenge I think enterprise customers still face is they don't know which technology stack to bet on, quite frankly. Um, I think that's getting better, but it's still quite confusing. The other thing that's hard is that how do you run all of it? So as big data grows up and has to be part of the enterprise operations, well that means it costs money. <laughs> and you know, we talked to a customer today and said, look, I'm not, he told his, his guys that I'm not going to put this big data cluster in production unless you tell them how much going to cost today and six months from now. And so one of the other things we're doing is we're helping people forecast their infrastructure capacity around their big data clusters so they actually can afford to run them. Right? So in your talk here, yeah. what, what's the big theme? Big theme is actually allowing big data to run in an integrated enterprise environment. Both automating across your applications, making secure all the infrastructure underneath it so you don't have you know, sneaky ways of getting into your most valuable asset in your data, and then making sure you actually run this stuff on a budget. So give me an example. I got a data lake yeah. out there. Yeah. So I got this big data lake. Right. Right. How do you guys fit into that architecture? Well, I'll give you an example. So we, we're working with a major retailer that's very digitally savvy, and uh, so they're automating all both their back office stores and their web properties. And so they have big data clusters that are analyzing customer sentiment, but they want to connect that to their all the other retail operations, their point of sale systems, their inventory systems, logistical systems. All that's got to come together as one holistic end-to-end -end system. So I got to ask you about the um, IT service management, IT operations, yeah. IT anything now is now programmatic. You mentioned APIs yeah. and some of those things you guys are offering. The data center has been, and BMC has been there for a long time as a brand. 
how is the new BMC leveraging its existing products yeah. while taking advantage of the historical data that you guys have with the customers? Because instrumentation's been around for a while. You right. guys have been doing systems management, yeah. service management. Has the open source community changed you got the, the, the strategy? Yeah. And how does a developer work with you guys? Well, the, the, the challenge for most people in data centers is that it's more complex than ever before. <laughs> Technology is changing faster than ever before. So wrapping around high levels of automation and governance around all that stuff becomes even more important. So that hasn't changed. It actually creates more opportunity for us. The thing that really has changed is the expectations that all that IT tooling looks beautiful. Mobile first. Uh, designed around the personas of people using them. And by the way, the people that they're serving in the business, they want a sexy mobile app to get help with, right? So we focus a lot and on- And they want a targeted app that they like. Yeah, that's so right. So it has to be a good app, right? That's right. So we put a ton of investment as we modernize our company on doing mobile first persona-based design. So people just don't use our products, they love our products, and it makes it easier for them to collaborate with each other. And so give me an example of how that's rendering it for a developer in an enterprise, because yeah. that's one of the hottest trends we saw at DofferCon last week was, yeah. The container madness trend right, has right. highlighted that the enterprise development market is really on fire right now right, because right. of all the automation with DevOps. Right. How is IT ops and how are you guys, where do you fit in that explosion? Well, I, think, you know, I love the line that in infrastructure is code, right? Because what DevOps is all about is making sure the developers have maximum control on where the code is going to run, how it's going to run, whether it's running properly. And so we're actually working with a big payment company right here in the valley that's putting together big Mesos clusters to automate all these containerization and microservices architectures. But then all that has to be orchestrated. And you don't want a developer writing custom scripts every time they want. Is that what you guys do? Yeah, so we create that kind of control plane layer across all that stuff, and then again, give them the APIs to get access to what they need, orchestrate it, automate it, without having to write a million lines of code every time they do the same thing over and over. So it's the, you know, I love some of these big trends that happen. I want to yeah. get your thoughts specifically around yeah. BMC because the, of the historical relevance of systems management and IT right. service management right. and, and, and IT services in general. Oh, containers have been around for years. <laughs> I've seen that movie before. So a lot of the themes have been, uh, things have happened, paradigms have happened in the past, right. but with a little twist. Right, right. What are you guys seeing now? I mean, that's the same trend-like concept or paradigm yeah. that's being implemented differently given the architectural and the deployments are different, obviously cloud, big data. Right. What, are, what are some of the things that you guys see that are, are consistent core competencies that BMC's carrying over yeah. to the new world? Well, I think w what hasn't changed is that, you know, there's more moving parts now. Those moving parts can be in multiple places, right? So the problem of increased complexity and heterogeneity has continued to explode. So we've always been about that. Now the difference is that it's moving so fast that, that have driving extreme levels of automation around all of that, knowing how it's all connected to each other, because all the stuff automatically ultimately makes up a business service or an application some real person's going to use. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to manage all that stuff and orc and understand how it's related to each other, so you can actually make the most yeah. sense out of it. Robin, yeah. what are some of the yeah. conversations you have with customers? Yeah. I mean, is it, hey, we're instrumenting everything now, so everything's now digital. So yeah. if you say it's everything's yeah. digital, yeah. the next logical question is, you can actually instrument everything. Yeah. Right. Uh, is that some of the conversations, or is it more basic, like, hey, I got to uh, grow my top line revenue? Right. Share with us some of the conversations. So you're one in. of the hottest conversations right now is how to make all this stuff secure, right? Because what, what we find is customers have tons of technologies that tell them where the problems are, where the vulnerabilities are. And in fact, most of the times they know how to fix those vulnerabilities. What they don't have is the automation tools to take all that knowledge and make sure everything is actually <laughs> running in a secure, safe state. So, that's so sec surfacing yeah. the secure, securely surfacing I'd sites right. would be one. Right, right. So secure, it's a marriage of secure operations. Operations is kind of what we're talking a lot about right now. Secure ops. Secure ops, yeah. yeah. That's a good word. I should use that more <laughs> often. <laughs> so that's one. Creative uh, Commons. Uh, uh, running the multi-source cloud. So I think there's a big cloud movement, but the reality, any every enterprise has a mix of... Multi-cloud. Yeah, on-premise, outsource cloud, SaaS, you know, uh, Amazon services. That's more the norm now, right, than it, than it is. Inception. It is, but if you're the CIO, you have to make all that somehow work together, even though you have less and less control, right? So the job has gotten more complex and changed, so we're providing a lot of solutions to help them automate all that. All right, so i got to ask you, I know you were CEO of, of a growing startup. I think you raised over $25 million yeah. in equity at Clusterx. Yeah. What attracted you to BMC? Because I mean, yeah. it's always hard to lure talent. That talent, talent in migration usually yeah. is an indicator of kind of opportunity. Right. Um, right. It could be challenges, growth, opportunities, whatever they are. But what lured you into um, yeah. to look at and then accept 
the job at BMC. Yeah, well, well, BMC has a, a long heritage of being very, very close to enterprise customers. And, you know, in fact, one of the first products BMC ever had was managing, you know, mission critical database clusters <laughs> back on, on, like, on mainframe systems. And still where most of the transactional data sits today, right? So, a long history of being very, very close to customers. And uh, at a time of rapid change, when enterprises are looking for somebody to help them, being in a company that has the cover of being private to make the radical changes in business model and technology and take all those relationships and help those customers move forward, this is really the, the once in a lifetime opportunity they saw at BMC. Was there any technology that jumped out at you that you yeah. thought, wow, well, that, that, that's very relevant? Yeah. What, share some insight there. The thing that was the most surprising, most exciting when I came in the company is a product we call MyT, which actually provides that kind of mobile self-service to get help from, uh, for business people to get help on everything they need from IT. They could get the services they want from the cloud. They can collaborate with people if they need their password to be reset. They can order new services, but all the same way they would as if they're using Uber or Facebook. Great. Robin, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate your insights. BMC here on theCUBE at Hadoop Summit 2016. We'll be right back with more live coverage. Day two of three days of coverage. Here you're watching theCUBE.